Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer series. Our mission is to assist you with creating more peace and tranquility in your life through anxiety release exercises and supportive tools created to slay your anxiety. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer Academy. We've been offering a free podcast for almost nine years to help anyone suffering with anxiety find relief. Now we're helping you go deeper by providing step-by-step support on how you can get the best experience from our favorite tools and techniques for overcoming anxiety. Visit the Anxiety Slayer Academy and get your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here today with my wonderful friend and co-host, Ananga Sivier. We come together weekly from Kent and Leelanau to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and answer listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. Together, we share a powerful collection of techniques to reduce anxiety. In this week's podcast, we'll be talking about how to calm anxiety when it strikes at night. Welcome back, Ananga. It's good to be with you again for another episode of Anxiety Slayer. Hey, Shen. What do you find is the best practice for our listeners who wake up in the middle of the night feeling anxious? Well, it's something I've experienced myself on many occasions. And I think the first thing is to be prepared to take action. Sit up and put the light on and Allow yourself the self-care step to do something to help yourself feel better. I find that if you just try and stay in bed and hope it will pass, that your mind very soon gets engaged in the anxiety and it can quickly escalate. So to sit up, put the light on. If you're sharing a room with somebody else and you're concerned about disturbing them, get up and move to another room. Don't try and lay there in the dark hoping it will pass because the mind will quickly start turning over on itself and anxiety can feel so much worse. Without question, the the times that I didn't know to get up and change things up are the times I suffered the most Mm -hmm. at night, for sure. So taking action is a really great recommendation. Yeah, and to be kind to yourself. Very often we go into that place of uh, objection, we don't want our sleep disturbed and we'll start thinking of all the things we need to do the next day and the inconvenience of it. But all of that brings up more adrenaline in the body. So to be kind to yourself and know that if you fix your mind on how this might spoil tomorrow, you're taking yourself away from the opportunity to do something right now to help yourself feel more calm. And it's more likely to hinder your chances of getting back to sleep when you let your mind become irritated with the situation. For me, Some things that really help are to try and keep my mind quiet and calmly accepting or use my intelligence to direct my mind that this is something that's happened. And while it may not be pleasant, there are things I can do to help myself feel more calm. Sometimes it's as simple as just picking up my Kindle and having that there with something soothing and inspiring and gentle and just starting to read rather than letting my mind chew over on its own anxious thoughts to just pick something up and read and just train my mind into some new thoughts. And sometimes that's enough, but to be gentle and not allow the adrenaline to come up. And some other things that can really help is having a rescue kit by your bed. Keep some bark flower, rescue remedy, nighttime spray by your bed. And as soon as you wake up with anxiety to sit up, Put the light on, acknowledge that, okay, this is happening. I'm going to do the best I can to support myself with this and spray some rescue remedy under your tongue straight away. One of the things that I like to do as well is I have some lavender essential oil by my bed and I'll often uh, diffuse that. But sometimes when I'm not diffusing it, I just put a couple of drops uh, in my palms and rub my hands together, and then just take a nice deep breath in. Uh, The other thing that I like to do when my mind starts to get really, really active is picture all of my thoughts up on a blackboard like they have at schools. Well, maybe they don't anymore, (laughs) but, you know, a chalkboard. Um, And then picturing myself erasing all of, of what is coming out, erasing that board 
until it's a blank slate. That's been something that I've done for years and years. And actually, my, my husband taught me to do that a long time ago. So that's helpful. And of course, we talk about EFT tapping. Yeah, EFT is a really useful technique to know well enough that you can use it in the night. That requires some prior familiarity with it, really getting to know the tapping points. And it's really helpful to just sit up or remove yourself to another room and just start tapping the EFT points through, taking steady breaths while tuned in to the sensations in your body or the, the thoughts in your mind. And at first it might feel challenging because you're allowing yourself to lean into the anxiety, but that is the way. It's the way through and out is to acknowledge and, and lean in and, and support yourself. But after a couple of minutes of tapping, you'll feel the symptoms start to subside and your mind and body start to relax. And although it feels like you're taking yourself away from bed and being up, which is not what you want to do, it really is the quickest way to address the anxiety and help you settle and get back to sleep again. In our new first responder series course on stopping anxiety attacks, we have a beautiful recorded seven-minute SOS guided tapping session that will walk you through and talk you through how to tap and feel calm and relaxed again. And the course isn't available yet, but it will be available soon. But in the meantime, you can follow a guided tapping session in our free Anxiety Slayer Starter Course, which you can get at anxietyslayer.com or at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. The other remedy or uh, recommendation that we have is the almond milk drink that Ananga and I both enjoy. Get up and make an almond milk drink with some warm almond milk and maybe a little bit of nutmeg, pinch of nutmeg to help you get calm and relaxed and fall back to sleep. It's incredibly good for your body and, and for your mind. Yeah, almonds are so good for your nervous system. Nutmeg is a natural sedative. And if you feel that, you know, that may be a commitment in putting fluids in your body and you're going to have to get up again in the night, just make a small cup, just a small cup and sip it. Put some rescue remedy in there or spray some rescue remedy into your mouth as well. Then you're using natural remedies along with the techniques like tapping, breathing, gentle reading to help yourself settle back down. And for further support, getting back to sleep, you might even choose to curl up and listen to a guided relaxation or even practicing the long exhale. Yeah, that's one of my absolute favorites. Um, if I'm going through a particularly stressful time, very often in the morning, my mind will wake me up and it wants to ask me, what about this? What about that? Things that in the day I can be fairly calm and resourceful about, but around 4 a.m., 3 a.m., it's going to wake me up and, and not put a very good uh, light on such concerns. And one of my favorite things to do, and I did this just the other day, is I have some very comfortable earphones, soft ones that I can lay down on my side without them digging into my head, and a little MP3 player. And to just put that on and listen to a nice, calming, guided breathing practice, guided body scan, that's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, in this instance, I listened to Tara Brach. Because if I listen to our own guided meditations, I'm going to start critiquing them. <laughs> <laughs> so listen to somebody else. So Tara Brach has a very nice soothing presence. And I just have a playlist of several of her um, meditations on my MP3 player. And I just let them roll, curl up, put them on really quiet and follow along. And very soon I'll drift off to sleep. And at a certain point, they kind of wake me up a bit and then I'll doze off again. And then it's time to take the earphones out. Mm-hmm and just settle down. But that really helps me. So to wrap things up today, it's important to have a, an anxiety rescue kit by your bed. And we recommend that you have some rescue remedy. Uh, there's a nighttime version that you can get. Lavender essential oil is, is another good thing to have in your kit. And then of course, your audio player, maybe something to read. And as Ananga mentioned, some soft and, and comfortable earphones as well. If you're one of our listeners who wakes up in the middle of the night feeling anxious and distraught, we hope that this podcast has been helpful for you. And we recommend that you listen again and again until you find yourself in a place where you can know exactly what you need to do when you're in that situation and know that you have everything you need 
to move forward and get a good night's rest. Get everything you need to start slaying your anxiety today. Visit anxietyslayer.teachable.com to claim our free Anxiety Slayer starter course. You get four guided sessions, including an EFT tapping session, guided breathing practice, and special module on overcoming the fear of anxiety. Don't just listen to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. Become an Anxiety Slayer. Claim your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com.